oil processing ready for launch. Milestone reached. Oil acquisition and refining unlocked. Welcome back, everybody, to Satisfactory. I'm the Bearded OG, and in this episode, uh, we've got a few things to do. If we take a look at the to-do list, uh, bloop, to -do list on the right-hand side, uh, we're going to set up a stator production line. Uh, then I have several updates that I want to show you uh, that I've done in the world since the last episode. We're going to put up some power storage, and then we're going to make 50 motors to do the next milestone. Uh, all right, so let's get started with stators first. As you can see here, I have a new design here in the blueprint for stators this is a pretty simple design um, came together nice and easy uh, so let's start with the uh, assembler first um, so I uh, am using my alternate quick wire stator recipe that we found from a hard drive and I've overclocked it to produce 10 per minute the reason for that is because the standard motor recipe requires an input of 10 stators per minute um, so I figured well let's just let's just create the whole design to produce 10 per minute and so that's what we did uh, another thing that I'm gonna do moving forward is anytime I overclock a machine I'm gonna paint it red now I know that the light up there turns white when it's overclocked but this is easier to see at a glance um, that this machine is overclocked so that way I know that I have a power shard in there and that I have it overclocked okay so uh, this recipe takes in then uh, 20 steel pipe per minute and 75 quick pi uh, quick wire per minute. So over here, I've got a foundry set up. I have this underclocked to produce 30 steel per minute because the pipe constructor machine making the pipe requires 30 steel ingot per minute to output 20 per minute, which is perfect for this input here. Also, um, same thing when I underclock a machine moving forward. I'm going to paint it yellow so again I can tell at a glance that that machine is underclocked. Okay, um, and then over here we have a constructor that's overclocked to produce 75 quick wire per minute because again that's the input that this requires. We are already producing uh, caterium ingots at that little facility up there instead of bringing the ore in so that way I don't have to set up a smelter as a part of this, uh, this little setup here. The logistics are pretty straightforward down below. Uh, the only thing that I had to do a little bit odd is I had to do an S curve here because uh, the 90 degree angle was clipping into the end of this. Otherwise, it's very straightforward and everything is up off the floor, making it nice and clean. Alrighty, so let's, um, let me just save this again. I'm pretty sure that I did save it, but <laughs> just in case. And uh, that puts it back up here, unfortunately. So I got to move it back down here. Yeah, I, I mentioned this before, but trying to set the directory from this menu is just really weird. I haven't figured it out yet. It's just easier to save the blueprint and then, you know, move it through this menu here. So they didn't make that very intuitive. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this stator uh, facility right here. And I, I haven't decided for sure what I'm going to do ultimately with this, with this first uh, factory building here. Um, you know, we can go as far that way as we want to. We can also go vertical. Um, but kind of the way that I have the belts coming in, though, we're, we're a little bit more limited in terms of, you know, uh, north to south space. So, um, but this is this is going to be our, you know, our main steel production facility making steel products. So we'll just kind of, you know, we'll just kind of play that by ear. But I did play around a little bit with some design stuff, too. Uh, we've got... I'm, I'm experimenting with some, you know, red trim on the rails uh, to go with the black and green of the building. And uh, I got steel beams in, uh, in for supports. And, you know, we're using the, the single pane windows. Those are painted black. Bottom of the building is painted black, but the, the top is, is green. And, uh, yeah, so just kind of playing around with some different designs. Um, we'll worry about the, the final aesthetics of this building once I have placed everything in it that I want to place in it. All right, so good. 
let's come on over here in and get this thing set in place. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, we want to keep our our border of one tile, which we have in place pretty much all the way around the factory here. So we have plenty of room to move around. You know, it's kind of funny too. I was I was over at the original factory uh, doing some stuff over there, and uh, that place is such a mess. I mean, it's everything is straight and you know routed and organized it's just with all the logistics on the actual floor it's just so much more convoluted i guess is really the right word than than this design here i really like it when you put your logistics on a different floor uh so it's, everything's just a lot cleaner anyway um <clears throat> excuse me so uh yeah all right we got this border in here so what we're gonna do then is we're gonna pop the blueprint um, right in this slot here and let's kind of do it from this corner right here so we'll grab this and we're gonna just suck it into this corner here right there that should be exactly what we want it looks pretty good Okay, good. Now, um, what we're going to do next is we're just going to move this stuff back. Uh, the wall back. All the pieces. And we have this. Here, let's just do this. I can go there. That can go there. That can go there. And then we want to copy the conveyor wall here. Okay, so that should mimic all of that. I believe it does. Alright, now what we can do is just take all of this away. Beautiful. You know, one thing I think I'm going to do different here, though, now that I look at it, is let's raise this up. To here. Which means um, we also want to do that in the design, too. Let's go do it now so I don't forget. I like to, you know, keep things off the floor as much as possible. Even though this is a logistics floor, you know. That way it just stays cleaner. And it's easier to, <clears throat> to move around. Alright, put that there and put that there. Alright, let's save the blueprint. I'll worry about moving it later because we may make some more changes to it too as we go along. Let's leave those walls open for the moment for accessibility. All right, now what we're going to do is we're just going to put this here and put that there. And this is all Mark 1 line. All right, let's extend this to there and extend that to there. That should fix all of that. Okay, let's do our inputs. So what's going on now is that I have I have a 270 coal line coming in right here to the factory. This was the very first pure node that we tapped into up in the red jungle. And it is feeding in here a four, no, sorry, three foundries, each taking 40. So basically it's 120, and we have a Mark II 120 line going into there. Uh, everything on the main line here is Mark III. In this facility over here, we have two more foundries taken in 40 each for another 80. So basically we are utilizing 200 of the 270 coal coming in and we have another 70 that we can play with. 
We're going to need 30 for our new setup. Um, and so that's going to come into here. I'm just going to, again, use Mark 3 for the, for the main line coming in. Um, actually, hold on. Before we do that, let's get the splitter in place. Technically, the further down we get, the you know, the slower the belts can be. But I've got the resources, so I'm just gonna do it that way. Uh, I think that's right. Let's just double check it, so make sure it's not trying to line up on something else. Yeah, that looks good. And then this can just be a Mark One belt going into here. Okay, we should see some coal yeah, going in momentarily. That looks good. Okay, that takes care of our coal. And we still have another 40 coal that we can use from this same line, uh, which will probably just set up a duplicate stator setup as one of the inputs to our motor setup. And at this point, I'm planning on just putting it right here. We'll extend the floor out further over the sea there. Okay, that takes care of that. Um, next, let's do the iron input. Uh, so for the iron, we currently have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, we have seven inputs of 30, which is 210. That's a 270 line. Therefore, we have 60 iron left to play with. We need to take in 30. So once again, when we set up the second stator align for the motors, uh, we'll use the rest of that, and that'll max out that belt of 270 iron. And then we have another belt of 270 iron that's come in we haven't even touched yet. Uh, you guys told me in the comments too that somewhere over there there's another iron um, deposit and uh, so uh, when the if and well not if when <laughs> probably the time comes that we need even more iron then I'll find it at that point but right now we have way more than we need at the moment so I'm not too worried about it at this point. Okay so let's see this is the iron input right? Uh, it's going to go into, yeah, it's going to go into this constructor making the, the, no, sorry, not the constructor. It's the second input for the foundry. For a minute there, I thought I screwed something up. Second input for the foundry, right? Okay. So let's grab a splitter and, uh, let's make sure we're mostly more or less in the middle here. That's pretty good. And then we want to put this on the... Yeah, this here and yeah, see, I, holding control is not going to work here because it's trying to line up on the actual foundry's input instead of what I did. So I'm just going to make sure my compass is facing directly south um, and that should get us pretty damn well lined up. It is, it is showing a green line there, so maybe what we'll do is get the green line right in the middle of our compass. I think that's what we want to do there. Okay. That belt is straight enough to not be an eyesore, so it's good to go. All right, that brings the iron now into the second input of the foundry. And it's flowing through, so looking good there. Uh, let's put a doorway here. The final input is the Ecterium ingots. Now that is on this Mark II belt, and it's not positioned for us to be able to use a lift or a direct connection. So we're just going to have to angle the belt down on this one, which is okay. It's not a big deal. Uh, all right, so this one will probably line up, but just in case it doesn't, let's make sure we're right in the middle. And we want to come on the, yeah, the second belt. Yes, control does line that one up, so that's good. Because it's the only thing in range for it to connect to. And this one will just angle down. Because, again, it's just the position of where that uh, this belt is. It's just, there's not enough room, you know, for us to use a lift to make it nice and straight. Uh, and likewise, even if we tried to put a lift and go up here, it still wouldn't be lined up straight with this anyway. So, here's what it is. That gets our Caterium ingots in place. We should be good to go there. Let's patch this up. Um, actually, here. No, we want this to be... 
another doorway. I haven't ultimately decided to how things are going to be down below here. In other words, if I if I open things up more on the logistics floor, right now I'm separating them with walls. Um, so yeah, we'll just have to see how that works. But that's kind of more of a final aesthetics thing that we'll do at the very end of setting up this particular building. Okay, so probably probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a, another e exact duplicate of stators over here and then we'll try and utilize this floor space for our motor factory and our we have to set up another rotor input for that too. That's the tentative plan. We'll just kind of see how that comes together. Um, for now, let's not let's not fill in this gap for now. Let's just leave it open. Okay. Next thing we want to do is uh, get our windows brought over. And I'm placing uh, beams every five windows, the vertical beams, for support. Purely just aesthetic, of course, but somewhat realistic, I think. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. Right here is where it needs to go. Let's get these windows painted up. And it looks like we're going to have one, two, three, four, five. Another beam needs to go right here. Can I grab that? Yep, middle beam. That one needs to go up. One more little tick there. Okay, so that's merging differently into there than that one is over there. So probably what we need to do is remove those pieces and rerun it. Oh, you know what? I think the issue is that this is turned around the other way. I wish they were the same on both sides to avoid that. See how this kind of has like a little indentation here in the center, whereas this one... Oh, that one's turned on its side. Oh. I see. Huh. All right, I'll have to mess with that later. I don't want to spend time on that right now. That's all aesthetic stuff. We'll deal with that later. Let's finish painting this here. And, okay, next thing we want to do is put our power connectors in. Uh, so let's grab a power connector, and we want to line it up here. We want another one lined up there. And we want one lined up here. Whoops. Thought that was a little high. Okay, it gets our power going. Now we just check it and make sure everything's working the way it's supposed to. You're getting your coal and your iron. That's good. You should be getting your steel ingots. Not yet. Oh, there it goes. Okay. Starting to come in there. That's good. You should be getting your pipes. You already got your quick wire, so that's going the way it needs to. We should see pipes start to come in here in a moment. You always got to check this stuff because sometimes, you know, all it takes. There we go. Is a lift not set correctly or, you know, something screwy? Especially when you have to connect the lifts to the 
floor hole instead of the machine, then you really got to watch it. But if you space them like I have here, you can connect them to the machine and then you have plenty of plenty of room. Some of my other design blueprint designs are, you know, they're a lot tighter. So those ones you have to really watch. But yeah, looks like we're in business. This is making its first batch of staters and there they are. Okay, fantastic. Last thing we need to do is get this over to uh, to our storage. So we've got an output there. And I think what we'll do is we'll just run that straight through this wall here. You know, actually, I'm going to use Mark III for this just to move it faster. I mean, ultimately, it doesn't matter at the end of the day. Once everything's running at full capacity, it's still only going to produce what it produces. But I just like to use the Mark III. I know it doesn't really make sense, but it is what it is. Okay, now, in this room, we need... I want to tap into... I want to tap into the line that is delivering down the center, which is the encased industrial beams. When I say the center, I'm talking about this center belt here because that's the one that's going into this next set of storage. So we could tap into this line probably right about here. We'll just wrap it around and come right into through here. Okay, yeah, let's try that. Get rid of this. Our line is right here. This line here. One, two. There we go. Okay. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. Look at those staters coming through. All right. Now, um, I don't remember if I set these smart splitters up already or not. I think I started doing it. So that should be this center one. I did. Okay. So it'll send the staters out the left output, which will be the center storage. And I believe I set that one up for motors when the time comes. So all we have to do here is just come over here, uh, select the image, parts, the stator is right here. There we go. And it's starting to fill up with staters. It's a beautiful thing. Okay. So we have accomplished our first stator setup. Let's go ahead and mark that as done okay try that again mark that as done click away from it so it what the fuck mark that as done click down here there we go I guess we can't click inside the list I can't press enter because then it'll put a space in there or actually a paragraph marker which we don't want all right, good. So let's go ahead and let this just run and start building our staters up. I do actually have some staters already, though, that I uh, that we temporarily made when we were doing stuff for phase two, and it had a bunch left over. Uh, we want those because we're going to set up some uh, some batteries. Uh, so we have 81 there. Uh, let's take a look at that recipe. Power storage. That takes five staters. So, um, so we could we can do a total of how much? Damn it! How much does five go into 80? I should know this, but my brain's not working. 80 divided by five. Okay, so we can t set up a total of 16 just with what we have in our inventory alone. Um, and that's probably all I will set up for now anyway, but we will, we'll do more as well. 
Uh, we also need to make sure we have plenty of reinforced frames, and we got a ton of copper wire already. Modular frames, I should say. So let's grab several of those, too. Yeah, that should be good. I'm going to actually... Yeah, let's just grab a stack of 100. Okay, so... I have uh, several things I want to update you guys on, uh, changes and improvements and whatnot that I've done to the world. And um, are we in fly mode? Yes, we are. Okay. So let's uh, let's fly around and just kind of take a look and see uh, what's happened. So first of all, I have put in my entire row of coal plants, of coal power plants, all the way down. And so there's a total of 36... Uh, coal generators here and the reason for 36 is because we have two lines of 270 coming in so that's 540 and if we divide that by 15 that gives us 36 right because each one of those coal generators takes 15 coal so that's why we have a total of 36 and I have two 270 lines, you know, from what we, the work that we have done in the previous episodes coming in here. Each one of these lines is supporting 18 factories because half of 36 is 18. Uh, not factories, I'm sorry, uh, coal generators. All right, everything's running good. Um, these last two extractors, water extractors are underclocked. Uh, because they need to support a total of four coal generators, which is too much for one and not enough for two. Uh, so these are both underclocked to produce 90 per minute each, which is a total of 180, because we have four uh, taking 45 water in, so four, 45 times four is 180. And everything's running nice and smooth, no issues. Um, we have... We have f pretty steady power. The, uh, you know, our maximum production uh, is, you know, that's the one that we want to make sure is a nice solid line because that means there's nothing, no issues with our power generators. Uh, we do have some fluctuation in the actual consumption, but I, you know, I, I just haven't taken the time to try and figure out exactly where that's coming from. And honestly, I don't think I'm going to worry about it too much. As long as, you know, as long as this line isn't wildly fluctuating you know, we're okay. I've got some things hooked up, you know, that ha have power coming to them, but are not necessarily working. Uh, like, for example, our biofuel, solid biofuel, a uh, little setup over at the factory. Um, so anyway, the what I have going on here is I have two full vents of coal because there were a couple of times where I, I cut the power when I was making changes and stuff up on the road, which we're going to look up up there. And when when these go down, it's a real pain in the ass to get them all back up and running again. So what I did was I just put a splitter uh, off of this line before I, I, I fully utilized it. In fact, I actually had a smart splitter on there to do overflow initially uh, to fill these up. So that way, if, you know, the power does go down again and I have to start all these bastards up, I, you know, I can feed them coal from here until, you know, they get running again because this coal is coming from a very long ways away so it takes a long time relatively speaking you know for it to get here <coughs> all right so yeah that gives us a total of uh 3300 megawatts we are currently utilizing approximately half of that so we have enough power to get us you know keep us going for a little while and when the time comes for us to add more power we can uh, we'll probably at that point we'll probably be tapping into oil so we have several um, oil deposits uh, we got one there we've got one there uh, I think there's one over there uh, so we're we're in an ideal position uh, to start oil and among other things you know we'll maybe be making plastic and rubber and so forth we can also start using oil um, uh, power plants too for for power uh, so we may not do any more coal at all. This might be the only coal we'll do for this whole entire playthrough. It just kind of depends upon the timing of how, you know, everything comes together. 
Okay, got that done. Uh, of course, I've got all the rest of the lines run down here from our road that we built. And um, quartz and sulfur is... Uh, probably what I'm going to do next is get motors going, and then after motors I'll get a quartz and a sulfur production line going to make things like gunpowder, silica, quartz crystals, etc. Uh, one thing I did have to do um, is I had to take these lights and move them out one because their insulators were clipping into the conveyor belt. So that's kind of a pain in the ass and had to get that fixed. All right, I think that's it for down here. Uh, let's head on over and take a look and see what's going on with the road here. All right, so as you can see, um, I have dropped all of the lines uh, down here. Everything is nice and neat and structured properly uh, with the little trick using the f uh, floor holes. And we just have a nice road coming along here with supports underneath. Everything is railed up so OSHA doesn't get pissed. Well, OSHA's already pissed at me anyways because we got lots of unsafe, unsafe stuff going on. And then it, this is pretty much how everything is feeding into the lines below. Uh, these two here are our two power uh, power plant lines. So those I moved across the road and down this way, and you saw how they were hooked up down there. And then everything else is coming along the left-hand side of the road, or more specifically the eastern side of the road, uh, going down this line. And then I set up a hypertube uh, set up here, as you can see, that goes up there. Let's ride it up there and take a look and see what's going on up at the top. I just smashed my head into that. I might need to, I might need to pull this back a little bit. Um, but the reason I have this ramp here, if you, <laughs> if you can't already guess, <laughs> it's like one of those, uh, those emergency ramps that you see coming off of a mountain, you know, for, for trucks whose brakes go out, uh, you know, to slow them down. Well, that's what this is because otherwise, you know, coming, coming down on that tube, it's just slingshots. You just rocket you out of there. And so this, this basically, you know, slows me down. Um, and then I have, before we go up there, I have a little section down here that leads down to here. And then we've got a ladder here, you know, going down to the ground that allows us to get back up to here if we need to. And I'm plan I have a little fun thing planned um, for back here, but that's all I'm going to say about it. It'll be a surprise for another episode. All right, let's go up. This is cool. I think this drop is... I don't know if it's as far down as actually you know what it probably is as far down as our one by the northern forest they're both very very far down up here this is how I routed everything you know to separate them off the line and then going down the belts this way pretty straightforward but all nice and neat looks good uh, I also, as you can see, ran power lines, big power lines, um, from down below here. So I ran lines uh, all the way up here and then, you know, did a, a cross piece up here just for future expansion, you know, to get to get power up to this area. I'm also going to um, probably branch off of this this line here and go maybe to here and then cut across the water and then over to the other factory that way. Just haven't gotten around to that yet. And I think that's pretty much all I have to show you for up here. Here we go. Terminal velocity, baby. <laughs> Look how fast we're going. And there we go. We stopped. We got stopped by our truck emergency ramp there. Yeah, so it's looking good. I, I like this. Just It's so, so much better and neater than that clunky ramp that we built, you know. Okay, cool. Uh, let's head over to our, our starter factory. And just a couple things to show you over there.
So um, I was running out of reinforced plates. And the reason why I was running out of reinforced plates is because I didn't have a dedicated production line for that. I was taking the reinforced plates, you know, that I was making from this guy <clears throat> and using them as an input to create the modular frames. And, um, you know, the, the, what, I, what I had built up had lasted me for quite a while, but I eventually ran out. And my original intent was to, you know, if I needed more of these, I would just temporarily pause, you know, this production to build them back up. And then I got to thinking, you know what, I don't want to screw with that. And so what I did was I set up a dedicated uh, line here to make reinforced plates to send down to our storage. And so uh, we're using, we're just using a normal recipe here. Nothing is overclocked or I would have painted it red. However, I am using the, the net, the cool, uh, cast screw recipe that we found in the last episode uh, that takes and makes screws directly from ingots. So it basically uh, eliminates the rod intermediate product. So that's what this is doing. And then it just taps into the lines going back out to our storage. Um, I had an extra iron node over here that I wasn't using. And so I just put a mark one at 60 per minute, which is what we need needed. And I decided to run a high conveyor line to get over here just to keep things clean on the ground. And there you have it. Okay. Over here, uh, I added three more coal generators uh, to make uh, one section of eight. Just to get, you know, add a little more power on this end because everything, you know, with that new... Um, assembler that I added and the new miner uh, we were basically tapping out the power that I currently had and I'd like this whole facility to be able to run exclusively uh, off this power if I need to bring the grid down for some reason now right now everything is all connected together but um, I'll probably create a switch to at some point to separate those two grids I just haven't gotten around to it but because of you know this terrain here um, and because of how I originally set this up I, I just kind of have all the pumps slid over a little bit and you know kind of going over to the left I, I could rebuild the whole thing out further but it was one of those things where I, I didn't want to really want to spend a ton of time on um, so I just decided to do it this way all right so we got that done I think that's pretty much it for to show you right now except for that I do want to put some capacitor or some batteries in down here so we're going to do that next uh, I also do want to point one other thing out and that is that I was having some trouble in this factory with machine shutting down and um, it was bu bugging me so I decided to try and troubleshoot it and long story short the culprit was this lift right here this lift needed to be a mark II it was a mark one and because that was a mark one it wasn't you know this was stalling which was causing all kinds of other machines behind it to stall and it's just kind of amazing how one little thing like that can really throw the the whole the whole thing off so um yeah so as soon as i upgraded this to mark two everything started running smoothly and um it's i, I don't know if, it, if it's perfect but it's it's running pretty good there's hardly any shut shutting down going at all going on at all when I was over here earlier I thought maybe I heard something shut down but couldn't say for sure and even if it does happen it's very occasional so I'm not, probably not gonna worry about it but yeah you can see that this factory's you know with all the logistics up here too it's just <laughs> it's so convoluted uh, so definitely you know want to use logistics floors for anything we build moving forward but, but this is fine you know this was our first factory of the of the playthrough and you know it is what it is it'll be interesting maybe to come back here at the very end of the whole entire series and just say this is how you know what we started with and then this is what we ended up with fun stuff okay so let's do this um i'm gonna put in some capacitors or batteries to help uh with you know these guys with their biomass burners 
if we you know lose power or go over or whatever uh, so I'm gonna put a set of them down here but we'll also do probably a much larger collection of them down at the main factory at some point in the future all right so let's grab the power storage here um, and I want to space them so they're spaced out with the same um, spacing as the biofuel generators. Let's put the first one there. And, okay, yeah, good. So the connector is right there. And we should be able to just go on down the line and put one in, you know, per each biofuel. Thing is, those okay. How do I have that lined up? Because these these things are kind of irregularly shaped. So it's really kind of lined up more along here. Okay. So this is really kind of our center line. Oh, actually, you know what? It looks like I set these all up right on the seam. Yeah, I did. Okay, that'll make it easy then. We just set them up on the seams and we're golden. All right, let's hook up the power. Uh, uh, that one's maxed out. Oh, okay. Right, gotcha. So we'll upgrade that one to a Mark II then. Go in here, grab a Mark II pull, upgrade that, and there we go. Okay, so these are pretty straightforward. Any excess power that you have on the network, uh, which is basically from really the orange line up to here, that's all just power, extra power. Uh, what it'll do is it'll charge these guys up. And how many did we put down? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so we put nine down and, um, whoops. So they'll produce a hundred. So basically we have 900 megawatts for one hour coming off of here. If the, if the power goes down. Ideally what we should probably do is put enough of these down to match our entire, at least our entire maximum consumption. Oh, that's cool. I don't, was that, I don't remember this in update five. Maybe it was and I just don't remember it, but that's neat that we can actually see uh, our storage from here. And it, sh it just shows us right here how much we have, 900 megawatts. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, or no, that's the charge rate. Sorry, this is the actual stored amount here. So, yeah, what I'll do then is I'll, I'll create a dedicated spot down by the main factory to add more of these until we have at least enough to match our maximum consumption. And then periodically we'll want to continue to update it, update that. So that way if the power goes down, you know, we, we essentially have an hour, once everything's fully charged, of course, an hour to fix it. Awesome. All right, let's go ahead and mark off updates and power storage. And now we have our final milestone that we want to do. That we're going to have to... Um, do by we have to make the motors by hand because I don't have the motor production set up yet but I'd like to do it um, you know to get get it done so I'll meet you guys back at the West Coast factory okay so we have a we already have a total of 16 motors that we've just looted from hard drive sites uh, so we just basically need to make another 38 to get 50 
and uh, we should be able to do that here. We can make 27, so I just need a few more rotors and a few more stators. See, this this is actually an assembly item, isn't it? We can make them in here. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's do this. Let's just put um, a lift. Whoops. On the stators. Set this to make motors. And then we just need to hook some rotors into it, which are right here. This should be completely full of rotors. Yeah, it is. Oh, you son of a. All right, here, let's just bring this back a little bit. Okay, so that'll do 12 and a half per minute. Why are the stators not going in? This lift is probably jacked up somehow. All right, let's try. Whoops. By the time I get done fucking around with this, I could have just made it in my hand. <laughs> Isn't that the way it goes sometimes? Now they're going in. Okay. This is, yeah, okay. This is doing 12 and a half per minute because I have this, like, maximum overclocked. Because normally it only does, I think, 5 per minute in the normal recipe. Right? Let's take a look. Yeah, five per minute. Okay. Yeah, you know what? This this is actually not uh, very cost effective. <laughs> uh, so I'm just gonna make make it by hand, or at least make some of them by hand, just to to get it get it going here. All right, that gives us forty. We should have at least 10 in here. Oh, we got 27. Okay. I'll let that make a few more just so, so we have a few extra until we get the motor production going. We have everything else ready to go for the milestone. It's just the motors that we've been waiting on. Let's pop those in. And here we go. Oil processing ready for launch. Milestone reached. Oil acquisition and refining unlocked. Oil-based products can now be made. The byproducts of oil refinement can be used after further processing, as seen in the refinery. Caution. This is a reminder to minimize the chance of expiration during out-of-base activities. Okay. Uh, so, we just unlocked oil processing. Um, so now we can work with oil extractors and refineries, make uh, products like plastic, rubber, and circuit boards, and we get some new uh, items in the awesome shop as well. So, uh, this is definitely on the list of things to do. Let's uh, let's take a look and see what we might want to tackle next. Yeah, so we, we can't do the gas mask until we get the oil and plastic on. We can't do alternative fluid transport until we get the plastic going. Um, one of you guys told me in the comments that the liquid biofuel is some of the best, it, it's the second to the best fuel that you can use in the jetpack with turbo fuel being the best. So we'll definitely look into that when the time comes. Um, but all that's being held up by, you know, plastic and or rubber and stuff. Uh, this also being held up by plastic, rubber and motors. Um, and that's gonna give us the manufacturer and the truck. Uh, as well as the two things we need uh, to complete phase three uh, up here in the upper right hand corner. 
Uh, tier 6, that's going to require computers and rubber and heavy modular frames. The jetpack, again, rubber, plastic, other stuff. Computers and pipeline engineering. Okay, so, yeah, we basically can't do any of this stuff until we get plast plastic and rubber going. Uh, so let's go back to tier 5. I, I would like to... I would like to get this ASAP. So, motor production we're going to do next. Plastic and rubber and packaged fuel are all of those things we've, we've got to do first. And then, you know, I want to just get to this as soon as possible. Uh, but what's even better than the jetpack is the hover add-on to it. I, I, I think that's just adds on to the jetpack. Actually, I guess I don't know that for sure. Because once we have that, then we can legitimately fly and, you know, we will. <laughs> I try, I, I don't, you know, I, when I'm legitimately building something like on camera for you guys or whatever, you know, I don't fly around to do that. Um, I just do the flybys to to showcase things and do screenshots and that sort of thing. Um, okay, so, right. What we need to do is, let's go back to here. Gas mask, alternative fluid, or industrial manufacturing. I'm just trying to decide which one I want to do next. This, uh, which is the one that gives us the... Oh, okay, so this is the one that gives us the fuel generator. And that's, that's what will be our next power source. And we get Mark IV stuff, too. But we need rubber and computers and heavy modular frames to do that. We need the manufacturer for for that. Uh, so industrial manufacturing computers. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know. Well, l let's just select the gas mask next. That's going to be the easiest one to do. And um, but again, can't do anything until we get plastic and rubber going. Okay, cool. All right, you guys. Well, that is going to be it for this episode. So what I'm going to do um, off camera is I'm going to design a, a rotor production because I haven't actually done that in the blueprint designer. And then we're going to plop down uh, an, an, a mirror of our stator production and we'll plop down the rotor production. And then we will build a motor production. We got that to do, and we also have have to get a, a processing set up for quartz and for sulfur. And so those things, I mean, I'll probably blueprint design those things too, but those are kind of a one and done thing, I think. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but anyway, those are the things that are coming up. And so, yeah, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment, share the video, and we'll catch you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.